article again i i saw recently that i wanted to quickly um highlight also which i think might be interesting to see this is regarding new york times saying that finland 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 may be one of the most happiest places in the world um and this is an article courtesy of the new york times it says the finnish secret to happiness knowing when you have enough it's a very interesting expose on what happiness is um, in places like Finland. So the article starts off as follows. It says on March 20th, United Nations Sustainability Development Solutions Network releases annual World Happiness Report, which rates the well-being of countries around the world. For the sixth year in a row, Finland was ranked at the very top. But Finns, did tells, but Finns tell themselves, um, but Finns themselves, sorry, say the ranking points to a more complex reality. I wouldn't say that I would consider us very happy, said Nina Hansen, 58, a high, a high school English teacher from Kokola, a midside city in the west of Finland's coast. I'm a little bit suspicious of that word, actually. Miss Hansen, who was one of the more of the dozen Finns we spoke to, including a Zimbabwe immigrant, a folk metal violinist, and a former Olympian and retired dairy farmer, about what supposedly makes Finland so happy. Our subjects ranged in age from 13 to 88 and represented a variety of genders, sexual orientations, ethnic backgrounds, and professions. They come from Kokola and as well as the capital of Helsinki, Turku, a city on the southern and western coast, and there's three villages in the southern, eastern, and western finland full exposure or kind of confession i've always wanted to learn a um scandinavian country or sorry, a scandinavian language personally because it sounds so difficult to learn number one and it's a very location specific language it's the kind of language i'd imagine you wouldn't normally speak outside of the place that you're at whether you're in denmark sweden finland iceland you'd be speaking that language a lot if you're in those countries, but it's not something that you would you would think you would kind of come across if you happen to be backpacking in the flipping jungle of Honduras. Do you know what I mean? It's very locust suspicious. So it's not like a kind of general language that's spoken in loads of parts of the world, like Spain, sorry, like Spanish, or like even French. I would actually like to know um, a Scandinavian language just because of that, because it's something that's quite novel. You wouldn't really see a lot of people um, that would know the language. It'd be a bit of a surprise. It'd be a nice little thing to pull out at a dinner party that you know a little bit of Swedish, you know a little bit of Danish and stuff. That would be pretty cool um, to actually learn. But again, I haven't explored it in any way, shape or form, but I always had it in the back of my head. You know what? That'd be pretty decent. And also, maybe because I watch a lot of um, Scandinavian or Scandi dramas, tv series especially like crimes um crime series thrillers whodunits they're really up there with the best when it comes to putting those shows together if you don't mind subtitles they've got some of the best ones it continues while people praise finland's strong social safety net and spoke glowingly of the psychological benefits of nature and the personal joys of sports or music they also talked about guilt anxiety and loneliness rather than happy um, they were more likely to be categorized Finns as quite gloomy and quite moody or not given to unnecessary smiling so this is a very different way of describing what happiness is right many also shared concerns about threats to their way of life including possible gains by the far-right party in, in the country's elections and the war in ukraine and a tense relationship in russia which would worsen now that finland is set to join the nato and i remember a lot of series i actually watched they did a good thing of kind of explaining some of the racial tensions in these sort of like nordic um scandinavian countries and essentially what was happening from what i remember into a few series which i'm sure is reflective of real life but it kind of gives a little bit of a insight into it was that a lot of the people that were coming from like war-torn countries you know maybe parts of africa maybe parts of middle east were coming over to these kind of even countries with like t entirely different culture entirely different traditions entirely different way of life and the flipping the the clash was too much it wasn't really kind of a fit culturally for both sides that were kind of coming together at this place right so it's a it was a kind of weird time that kind of you could see multiculturalism maybe didn't work too well on top of that, um, they were going through, you know, um, the highest rates of unemployment, financial, you know, mini recessions and whatnot. So um, what you deem to be, um, you know, uh, what you deem to be actual, you know, residents that live there were finding it difficult to find jobs. Then on top of that, you got all this immigration happening. The, you know, the, the economy is on is down the shitter. 
it then creates all this really weird t- racial tension. These guys are coming in who are maybe don't really get to see so many <laughs> attractive, you know, looking ladies so much. They get a bit excited. Some really madness stuff happens. Cases of people getting assaulted or abused and all this sort of stuff happens. And then, of course, far right groups pop up. They see all this unrest happening and they sort of seize on it and jump onto it, which is what led to all of these especially those countries and if i remember reading correctly a lot of those places in scandinavia kind of had a real big right-wing uprising because a lot of those parties were able to identify um or kind of speak to the pain and the struggle that a lot of people were going through because of the mass immigration that was negatively affecting them whether it was kids in school not having school places whether it was jobs and whatnot all these things were kind of getting affected and the far right came in and swooped in and took advantage of it quite cleverly actually you think about it um but yeah it's kind of created a very toxic and very kind of unsafe um country for people to live in who happen to be migrants and stuff it continues it turns out even the happiest people in the world aren't that happy but there's something more than like something more like content Finns derive satisfaction from leading sustainable lives and perceive financial success as being able to identify and meet basic needs Arto O'Sullen a professor of the University of the uh, Eastern Finland who has researched well-being in Finn society explained in other words he wrote an email we know we so when you know what is enough you're happy I think this is an interesting quote because I feel like I've kind of come to that realization in my life and I feel like a lot of people have as well post pandemic. I feel like before the pandemic, I was maybe somebody who was, you know, on this sort of vibe of like, Oh, I want to be a millionaire before this time. I want to have this many businesses. I want to do this, do that. I had that kind of like hustle, grind, grind, grind mentality. And I didn't really see where I didn't really kind of envision what my kind of life would be like day to day. I just saw like a monetary sort of like amount I needed to get to. I saw like a particular job I wanted. I saw a particular place I wanted to live at, but I didn't necessarily know day to day what my life would be like. Relationships, friendships, um, happiness, all that stuff didn't apply. But when the pandemic happened, it kind of made me and I'm sure other people get down to the kind of what was what was necessary, what's going to give you the what's going to bring in the most level of joy it wasn't going on the holiday and all that stuff it was just being able to see your friends you've been able to have a drink with your friends going out for a meal with your friends um going to the park um seeing family all these things became way more important than all the other things that i was kind of striving for so i think oddly enough the pandemic i think made us all finish we've all kind of got that Finnish perspective now it's not something crazy or something kind of like woo woo that these people up north or the Nordic places do no it's something that I think a lot of us have kind of adopted I'm sure there's some people that have doubled down and said no I want to buy a fucking yacht and a McMansion but I think most of us are really kind of you know um, focusing in on the basic necessities that we need to give us a somewhat of a happy life and to make us feel fulfilled I know that's what I'm on anyway says so, yeah so the art couple for a safety sorry the art couple grateful for a safety net so it says here happiness sometimes is a light word and used like it's only a smile on the face says temu kiski the chief executive of the finnish design shop but i think this is a nordic happiness is something more foundational the high quality of life in finland is deeply rooted in the nation's welfare system mr kiski 70 47 who lives in toku said it makes people feel safe and secure not to be left out by society public funding for education and arts including individual arts grants gives people like his wife Herta, a mixed media artist, a freedom to pursue her creative passion. A woman, she you get you get art grants if you're like in your late not what in your forties you get art grants. Your Finland is crazy. It also affects the kind of work that we make because we ha- we don't have to think a lot about commercial value of art, says Miss Kiski. So what a lot of artists here make is very experimental. You can be forty seven and have an art grant. So you can be making flipping weird sculptures and shit. That's pretty wild, to be fair. <laughs> That's pretty wild. The advocate fighting to be heard. I guess this is the Zimbabwean guy, right? Is it Zimbabwean or something? Where is he from? Um, so this is, uh, says, as as a black person in Finland, which is more than 90% white, Jani to- Jani Toivola, 45, spent most of his life feeling isolated. Too often I think you feel, you still feel as a black guy, as a black gay man in Finland. Bloody hell. 
That's double entendre, isn't it? As a black gay man in Finland, that you are the only person in the room, says Mr. Mr. Toy Vola. Um, his father, who was Kenyan, was absent for much of his life. And Mr. Toy Vola, whose mother is white. Really? Does look mixed race to me. Shit. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, his father, who's Kenyan, and his mother's life, his mother is white, struggled to find black role models he could relate to. In 2011, he became the first black member of Finland's parliament, where he helped to lead the fight for the legalization of same-sex marriage. In Finland, same-sex marriage wasn't legalized. You'd never think that to be true, would you? Bloody hell. This guy doesn't look mixed race to me, does he, at all? This guy's got a white mum. If that's me, again, if that's me and I turned out mixed race like that, I'd be so pissed. Part of the beauty of being mixed race is that you look like Chris Brown. Why would you want to be mixed race and you just turn out looking like me? There's no point. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what? I'd rather just, you know what I mean? I'd, I'd rather not, to be honest. I'd rather go back in my mother's womb. Come on, mum. Bake me a little bit longer, please. It continues. After serving two terms, Mr. Toyola, Mr. Toyvola um, left politics to pursue acting, dancing and writing. He now lives in Helsinki with his husband and daughter and continues to advocate for LGBTQ rights. As a gay man, I still think it's a miracle that I get to watch my daughter grow, he said. Okay. Another person here says the teenagers raised to be content. It says um, the conventional wisdom is that it's easier to be happy in a country like Finland where the government ensures a secure um, foundation on which to build a fulfilling life and a promising future. But that exception can also create a pressure to live up to the national representation. Um, we are very privileged and we know our privilege, says Clara Passimaki. Pas Passimaki, 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 19, one of um, Miss Hansen's students at Coca-Cola. So we are also scared to say that we are discontent with anything because we know that we have it so much better than other people. Wow, what a reality, especially in the non-Nordic countries. Oh, it looks really cute. That's a nice outfit, actually. I like that. I bet they must have really good, good cold fashion over there, innit? They must have some really decent coat brands. Might be a good place to go actually buy a jacket for cheap. <laughs> Frank Martella, a psychologist with professor from Alto University, agreed with Mr. Pasiki's statement. The fact that um, Finland has been the happiest country for on earth for six years in a row could start building pressure on people, he wrote in the email. If we Finns are so happy, why am I not happy? He continued in a sense, dropping to the second happiest country could be a good long-term happiness for Finland. Imagine, imagine that. Imagine being so happy or so such in a privileged position that you complain that people think you're happy. That is first world problems, mate. That is first world problems. The Finnish way of life is summed up with Sisu, a trait said to be part of the national character. The word roughly translates to grim determination in the face of hardship. Such as the country's long winters, even in adversity, a Finn is expected to persevere without complaining. I like that kind of thing. That is basically me, basically. I'm basically Finnish. That is my MO. Even in adversity, a Finn is expected to persevere without complaining. That is me. This is me. This is this should be tattooed somewhere in my body. Persevere without complaining. Persevere without complaining. Review the situation. Take part. Take over. Review the situation. Take part. Take over. <laughs> if you know, you know. Back in the day, when it wasn't easy to survive the winter, people had to struggle, and then it's kind of been passed along generations, said Miss Pasimki. Our parents were this way, our grandparents were this way, tough and not worrying about everything, just living life. So, yeah, crazy little article there about Finn. I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can check it out if you want to. I thought it was rather interesting to see Finnish people basically complaining that they keep finishing too high up on the happiness report and they're not actually happy day to day. They just found out a way to be content with what they have. The article title is The Finish Secret Happiness, Knowing When You Have Enough. It's available on the New York Times website. If you need it, do your Googles. Do your Googles. Okay? Do your Googles.